Okay, so in the last video, we started looking at a differential pair with a current mirror active load, and we noted that that was basically the beginning of making an operational amplifier. In fact, that amplifier is sometimes called a single stage OTA or single stage operational transconductance amplifier. So today we're going to start to look at circuits that involve amplifiers and what happens if they have less than ideal amplifiers at their core. So here we have an op amp in, that's connected in negative feedback with the network consisting of RF and RI. And we are going to say that the op amp itself has some finite frequency response. So the value of the gain is A as a function of S or A as a function of the frequency. Now we know that the output voltage of an op amp is equal to the gain of the op amp times the difference voltage at its two terminals, V plus minus V minus. In other words, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal minus the voltage at the inverting terminal. And here we're also saying that this amplifier has a frequency response. We'll say that it has a single pole frequency response with some DC gain and a single pole represented by the denominator and the transfer function, one plus S over omega H, where omega H is the high frequency pole. To solve for this op amps gain in feedback, we can label this node A. Now we can do KCL at node A, and we'll write that expression out right now, noting that no current is going to go into the op amp, the current is just going to be leaving node A towards RI and towards RF. So here we have the current going through RF, VO minus VA divided by RF is equal to the current going through RI, in other words, VA divided by RI. We can further simplify this. All right, now we're going to substitute our value in for VO, and we will have the output versus input as a function of frequency. VO over VI as a function of S. All right, so after simplification, we have that the gain of the op amp is equal to one plus RF divided by RI times the quantity one over one plus S divided by A sub zero omega H times RI divided by RI plus RF. This first term should be familiar. To us, this is what we would expect the gain of this particular op amp configuration to be. The second term in the expression is a frequency shaping term that is modified by the feedback network. If we were to take the limit of the gain VO over VI as a function of S, we would find that it would be equal to 1 plus RF over RI if the gain of the op amp tended towards infinity. In other words, if the op amp were ideal. Let's look at this in a slightly different way. Here we're going to look at a single feedback loop where we have a forward gain component A and a feedback uh, component beta that's particularly connected in negative feedback. Now for this single feedback loop, we know that the gain is equal to A divided by one plus A times beta. The limit of AFB as A goes to infinity is equal to 1 over beta. Now we know that if we equate this to our op amp, we're essentially saying that 1 over beta is equal to 1 plus RF over R sub i. Now, what if we make that feedback loop? frequency dependent. So here we're going to add a frequency dependence factor to the forward amplifier gain, make it A sub S. Now we know then that we can just substitute A sub S for A in our prior equation. Oops. 
And again, our, sub, our substitution for A sub S is going to be an op amp with a single pole that has a frequency response that's equal to A sub zero, the gain at DC, divided by one plus S divided by omega H, where omega H is the high frequency pole. All right, so now let's ask, what is beta for our amplifier? Well, we just showed that beta, one over beta was equal to one plus RF over R sub I. But beta is really just a factor that tells us what the feedback is going from output back to input. So here I've drawn a network going from the output back to the input. V beta divided by V out is equal to a voltage division in this case. So R sub I divided by R sub I plus R sub F. And this is equal to beta. Now you would find that this is exactly the same if we use the equation on the prior page. Let's go ahead and put everything all together into one big equation. The voltage gain as a function of frequency is given by a DC gain consisting of A sub zero, the DC gain of the op amp, divided by one plus beta times A sub zero. And this is multiplied by a frequency shaping factor. Here, one of the things that you can see is that the feedback reduces the gain of the op amp and extends the pole frequency of the op amp. Now we have a couple of terms that we want to memorize here. The term A sub zero is the DC open loop gain of the op amp. The term A sub zero divided by one plus beta A sub zero is called the DC closed loop gain. The term beta times a sub zero is called the loop gain. So note we have open loop gain, closed loop gain, and loop gain. It's a bit confusing because the words loop gain are involved in all of these terms. So it's important to remember that one of them happens due to the open loop response, one of them happens due to the closed loop response, and one of them is simply the feedback the total gain and the feedback. Open loop gain, closed loop gain, loop gain. Now next we're going to look at the frequency response on a Bode plot and examine how to find the various gains that we just described.